All right, what's up, guys? We're going to go on a coon hunt tonight. Uh, a coon, coon hunting is a grand American tradition, and not many people do it anymore, which is why I've got the tech guy here going to capture a few little films for y'all tonight so y'all can see what coon hunting's all about. We've got our friends um, Tyler and Luke Hembry out here. They brought the dogs. Y'all want to introduce us to the dogs real uh, quick yeah. while it's still light? Well, this is a English two-year-old. She's a fall two-year-old is what they call her. Uh, she's out of Wicked Vapor on top. She's a double Briar Creek bred. Her mama uh, on her bottom side is a Hatchet River Dottie, would be her grandmother. So she's bred up pretty nice. She's young, just getting started. So maybe she'll do some good tonight. Has she treated a coon yet? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's been trained. Probably since she was eight months old. We mainly hunt her by herself, uh, but we hunt them together every once in a while. Who'd you get her from? Uh, I got her from uh, Tony Smith up in North Georgia. He owns okay. uh, the Wicked Vapor. So uh, it was a double Briar Creek bred cross. That's why I went with it, because I, I like that blood. And uh, she's been been pretty good for us here lately. So maybe What's she, her name? Uh, Cat, Hills Creek Cat. Okay. Yep. She's light colored, ain't she? Yeah. Yeah, when she was born, she actually looked like lemon color. Really? Yeah. Huh. Okay. What else y'all bring? Yeah. Uh, All right. Get the man out. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Good night, son. Moose. God. Moose. This is a uh, Hills Creek stump. He's a uh, grand pup to John the Baptist, and uh, his sire was uh, Butterbean, yep. the dog that Chad used to hunt. Goes back to Huckabuck, Main Street Roy. Uh, seven years old this year. Seven years old? Seven oh years old. Oh my gosh, man. Chad, you got to tell the story about his ears. Yeah, so we we had this litter of puppies, I guess seven years ago, <laughs> um, at my house. And when the puppies were born, a, like a real bad winter storm hit, like the night they were born. And uh, I went out the next morning and the puppies had just barely survived. They were all hypothermic. Uh, so I brought them all inside with the mama and everything. And his, the ends of his ears got frostbite. And so he ain't, he's never had any, he's never had any ears. The end of his ears froze off. And they just stayed that way. It doesn't seem to affect him though, does it? No, didn't affect him none. Dude, and I'll never forget when y'all sent me Y'all sent me that dang picture of that bulldog. Do y'all remember that? Y'all texted me that picture of that little bulldog. Oh, yeah, 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 and y'all yeah, yeah. were like, are you sure this dog didn't get, are you sure that female didn't get bred by a bulldog? And I, I looked at that and I thought, oh, crap. Man. Now look, you're going to have to do a better job on that camera. I almost forgot my dang coon squalls. I don't know how, many, how much dust is going to come out of this thing. It won't even blow. This froze up. <laughs> if you call that like you do turkeys, we ain't gotta worry about it. My coon squall froze up. <laughs> that one ain't, but I don't like the tone of that one. Don't hurt yourself. Well, I'm gonna have to retire that one. Get him dancing, you said? That's too bad, too. That's the Timothy Ball improved coon squaller. No more. How long do you think that was? How long? I've had this for at least 10 years. At least. I mean, it's just, they won't, I can't even pass no air through it. Look. locked <laughs> up. Really? Turn them loose. Turn them loose. 
So just to explain to all you people that never been coon hunting, when you turn these dogs loose, they go on, they go until they find a coon. So you don't know where you're gonna end up. That's why I got a darn backpack on with water and stuff in it. Those dogs might go five miles, they might go a hundred yards and tree a coon, but they're gonna go until they find one. And then they'll start barking and trailing. And then eventually when they find the tree the coon's in, they'll stay at the bottom of that tree and bark until we get there. So now we just gotta give them some time and listen. So what this is doing right now, we just turn them loose. This GPS, it shows us what direction. It's got a compass on it. That way we know where they're at, where they're going, how many yards they are from us. Then you click the map, and the map gives us the whole layout of the land. Zoom in, you got the road right here, and then you got all your aerial things, elevation, mountain, your terrain. So if, if we get in the mountains, you can get on a little bit not as steep as a a hill there, walk a saddle out. It just helps keep up with the dogs. We didn't used to have that, did we? No. So they got one tree down here. <clears throat> We're gonna walk in here and see if we can find him. That's a wrap, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, at least for you, we're gonna go turn the dogs loose again, but our cameraman is pizzling on out on us. So, uh, Luke, Tyler, thank y'all for taking the viewers along. And this is some fine dogs y'all got, man. Appreciate, Appreciate it, thank you. Yeah, they did real well. Well, we're gonna go get another one. Y'all have a good evening. Enough said. <laughs>